traders from across the globe and welcome to the 1714th edition of Short Term Trading Live with Oscar Carboni. Good evening traders. This year, 2018, we will be doing commodities, stocks, cryptocurrencies, baby, and foreign currencies. We certainly will be looking at a lot of stocks and cryptocurrencies here. Of course, we always trade the commodities. As you know, this is an extremely risky game. Make sure you trade with stops. Never trade without them. Put your stops in first. Know that you can lose all the money that you have, plus more if you're going to trade futures. Know the risks, but let's get moving because I know the risks and I know how to try to keep you out of trouble. It's called putting your stop in first. Make sure you do it. All right. So, video number seven, 1714 comes at you on a Sunday night for trading Sunday through Monday, January 8th, 2018. Traders, on the board, E-mini S&P, NASDAQ, ETH, and Euro all have a green omni, and I love clapping for those green omnis. Looks like S&P and NASDAQ just wants to run away, we'll see what happens. Uh, again, 2018, I promised lots of cryptocurrencies, lots of stocks. Certainly, we always do commodities and euro currency and other currencies. In this evening's video, I will cover each of those, but I had a couple of, well, I always get lots of viewer mail, but two of those I try to pull out for each video, and I would like to uh, answer two of those viewers tonight before we get moving. Natalie, viewer mail, what do we have? This one is from Tiki Tim. He said, cryptos, please. Tiki Tim, cryptos, please. You got it, baby. Tiki Tim, cryptocurrencies are coming. Ethereum in this video. We bought Bitcoin right before the, well, while we had the pullback, which I like to call the holiday reversal. The Omni went and bought Bitcoin. The Omni is going to buy Ethereum probably tonight or tomorrow, whatever we can get our fill price. So that is up next in the cryptocurrencies. We're already long Bitcoin. We're going to buy the ETH. I'll let you know how that goes. What's next? The other one is from Rohit Goel. Fantastic job with the year-end projections for the S&P Oscar. I was skeptical when you initially put up the targets, but became a believer as the year went along. One request for this year. Could you please also include year-end targets for the NASDAQ composite? Much appreciated. Ah, oh, year-end targets for the NASDAQ. Well, as you know, these were the year-end targets for 2017, which basically now have to go away, right? We don't really need them there anymore. So I will erase these, get them off the board, and here's what I will say to you. And thank you both for your mail. Thanks, thanks to everybody for that mail. We get tons of it. So, will I add the NASDAQ in this year? Well, let me say this. The NASDAQ is such a crazy cowboy. This year's 2017, last year's 2017 projection in NASDAQ, you know what it was? 6,600. Now, you can ask any of my Omniacs in the trading room. They are all well aware that that was this year's projection. I try not to put it out and leave it on the board all year because it rotates and whips around so much. I just thought it would be insane to give you a projection of 6,600. And what happens? It hits 6,600 at the end of the year. That's nuts. <laughs> go Omni, go. Thank you so much. Omni gave us this in the beginning of 2017 for NASDAQ. Yes, I will come up with a projection in NASDAQ. I don't know if it's going to sit on my board like the E-mini S&P, but I will come up with a projection in NASDAQ. I do have a very long-term projection in the Russell. The Russell 2000's long-term projection is 2400 Now, ask anybody in my trading room at 1200 Russell 2000, I gave this target for 2400 we're now $1,550. We went $350 above this so far towards our target. This is a target, not year-end. This is a forever target. We expect it to get there at some point between now and forever. <laughs> but we expect that to be a lot shorter than you might think. So there is a Russell standard target, not for the year. I will try to come up with the NASDAQ target, leave it on the board, and as always, I come up with an E-mini S&P target, and that you will get for sure. That will happen over the next couple of weeks. Commodities, stocks, cryptocurrencies, just like I told you there, Tiki Tim, we'll be doing cryptos, ETH, we're up for, and 
of course, Euro trading or foreign currencies. Traders, I am holding a five-day-long seminar here in Las Vegas. It is called OmniCamp. Fill out your applications. OmniCamp is the last week in Feb, first week of March. Only five of you are ever accepted out of all the applications that come in. Come to LiveWithOscar.com, click the OmniCamp banner, and fill out your applications. Time is ticking. Seats are limited. Let's get moving, cats. Come on out to Vegas. With no further ado, let's go look at some charts. Okay, traders, E-mini S&P daily bar chart. You've seen this chart in many videos. You see that we had these targets, right? The Omni 2017 target was 26.50. We hit it. We had a secondary target, 27.27. We hit that. And what's interesting is we are now getting up to the top of this channel here. I don't see why it would stop, but there will be some kind of resistance up here when we get there. But for now, looking great, green Omni pointing higher in your E-mini S&P. NASDAQ, interestingly enough, the same exact scenario right at the top of this major channel trend line. Now, will it go through? I'd have to say, put a gun to my head, and I say, yes, we get right through this line and keep on going. But there is that one question mark. We are buying dips until this market goes down. You buy it until it hurts. Remember, I told you that. Don't take any sell signals. You buy this thing until it stops going up. When it hurts is when you buy it and get stopped out. On that day, you consider not buying it for a little while. Until then, you buy this NASDAQ until it hurts. That's my opinion. Next, let's take a little ride on the Oscarism known as the F flag in the Euro currency. Now, a lot of traders are telling me they're getting bearish technical signals now in the Euro currency, but I see an F flag, and until that F flag is proven to not be one or it gets F'd, I think we stay inside this flag and we continue to look for higher. So we are buyers of dips for day trading euro currency on Monday. And then we move out to stocks, traders. Overstock.com. If you recall, I showed you this. Gave you an Omni buy signal right here. Market exploded. Got out. Then we came back down. Got a new Omni buy signal right here last Friday. We missed the trade literally by $1.10. We were trying to buy 75.50s on Friday. And then there is Ethereum traders. Crypto, 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 baby. Let's go with more cryptocurrencies. So you know we're already long Bitcoin, and I'll show you that investment every couple of weeks. I'll show you where we stand. Now Omni is really falling in love with Ethereum, and Omni is looking to buy it here somewhere. I will absolutely be looking to buy it personally for Omni. As we did with the Bitcoin, we will be buying the ETH as well and holding on. So I'll show you where we do get long if, in fact, we get filled. But Omni expects this thing to just keep on moving higher. And I do as well. That's your cryptocurrency. So you have seen the charts for the indices. You've seen the charts for the foreign currencies. You've seen charts about stocks and charts on crypto. Traders, there's more. It all happens live in my live trading room at www.livewithoscar.com. Come join me in that free trading room. So, traders, you've seen the charts. You've got my technical opinion of why I think commodities or indices should go higher, why I like some stocks, especially that beautiful stock I just showed you, overstock.com, cryptocurrencies going mad, and foreign currencies. Now, Traders, I have mentioned to you that, of course, I am delving into blockchain. I am delving into cryptocurrencies. And you know me, when I study, I start to study. So, of course, that's why I've come up with ETH as another buy. But remember this, ETH, Bitcoin, Litecoin, I don't care what's out right now. One of those is the VHS. The other grouping is Betamax. One of them's going to do well, and the others are likely not going to be as strong. Which will it be? Ethereum, Litecoin, OneCoin, Bitcoin? I don't know, but here is this. Forget about the trading vehicles, the coins. Let's talk about the 
blockchain technology because that's where I'm really interested. So I've been studying that and I have already voiced my opinion that I say five years from now there'll be no more brokerage firms. Trading will be done on the blockchain. So that was my opinion several weeks ago. You've heard me say it in these videos and of course I've been studying ever since. I am not the only person who thinks many of our industries are going to switch to blockchain. Many, many companies are getting involved and in a moment I'm going to read you an excerpt from this weekend's Investors Business Daily. Thank you very much investors. I read a stack of newspapers every weekend. This article caught my attention. I am going to read it to you. It is about the blockchain. I will say this though. What is starting to happen with blockchain reminds me very much of what I seen in the late 80s when the internet was released. Then in the 90s, once the internet was getting a little bigger and caught on, what you started to recognize was towards the end of the 90s, if you called your company IEatCrap.com, it became a billion dollar company. Hundreds of millions came to you. So if you were a store that sold absolutely nothing and getting ready to go out of business and you changed it to .com, it exploded. And that created a bubble. In 2001, we had to crash from that bubble. Does everyone remember the dot-com crash? Well, I think what's happening now is basically the same thing will happen. Because blockchain is basically creating an internet on top of the internet. However, like Long Island Ice T, you put the, the extension dot blockchain or you name it, something dot blockchain on your URL and your company may explode. What's that going to do? It's going to create a lot of BS companies worth nothing and create some sort of a blockchain bubble. When is that? Not tomorrow. Don't worry about it for a while. But keep this in mind. This is exactly how things started with the internet. Then you got the gold to start running out of nowhere. And then the crude started running. What do you see starting to happen right now? Just keep these things in mind. You know me. Down market, up market. I don't care which way it goes. Omni will go for it. We'll trade it. But I just want you to recognize I'm starting to see just a few signs now that are slightly reminiscent of 2000, not 2008, but of 2000. Keep that in mind. That's for the future. Leave it in the back burner. Now, this video may get slightly boring for the next three to five minutes, but I've got to read this article to you from Investors Business Daily because blockchain is becoming what I told you it's going to become. It's going to be huge, as Donald. So... I read Barron's, Wall Street Journal, Investors Business Daily, you name it, I read it this weekend, but this one caught my attention. So, in Investors, it starts to say, of course, the, the headline is, is Bitcoin just the opening act for blockchain? Absolutely. So let's read. Am I right that blockchain is going to take over and brokerages are going to close down? Yes. So... The likes of Microsoft, IBM, Oracle, Intel, Accenture, just to name a few, are also jumping on the bandwagon. Early efforts include creating blockchain tools for cloud services offering and taking part in consortiums developing blockchain offshoots for specific industries. Well, let's just listen to this. Blockchain is usually shared, it, excuse me, blockchain is basically a shared public ledger which tracks transactions and ensures the record of those transactions remains transparent and tamper-proof. Right off the bat, that sounds really appetizing for trading, doesn't it? All right, so, trust relationships. Trust relationships. Blockchain is a world-reliable digital bulletin board, says Ari Jules, a professor at Cornell University and former chief scientist and strategist at a security firm, RSA. And when something is written to the bulletin board, it sticks there forever. Any web shared blockchain is meant to be impossible to edit or forge. Beautiful, right? We love that. Blockchain is a way of creating strong trust relationships in a way that the internet alone can't do. And there's a powerful proposition in a lot of industries, adds Jules. Companies are not just using blockchain programs to run, any, to run just about any large-scale commercial project. But right now, you've got Deutsche Bank, which forecasts blockchain systems will, by 2027, record many, many of the worldwide transactions. The financial services and banking sectors likely to play key roles early on. 
The Garner Group forecasts an accelerating takeoff for blockchain and platforms for blockchain. Blockchain will deliver $4 billion in value-added technology and innovation in 2017. That growing to $21 billion by 2020 and $176 billion by 2025. I think they're way off. It's going to go way faster than that. Microsoft is making blockchain software tools available for projects through its Azure it's, 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 it's Azure Cloud Computing Service. There's a ton of work in the pipeline. I think 2018 we're going to see some things pop, says Matthew Kerner, a general manager of Microsoft's partner program. And it's got YAS, YAs, YAS. And the solution becomes broadly circulated among industries. I think we're going to see momentum build. JP Morgan Chase, JP Morgan, Bank of America, and two Microsoft, or just two or three of the Microsoft blockchain partners. Kerner expects synergy between blockchain and other fast emerging technologies. Artificial intelligence, for one. Blockchain and artificial intelligence should come together and lock horns and become one. Colin Sebastian, analyst at RW Bard, says artificial intelligence and blockchain could be the foundation for Internet 3.0 following the social media explosion created by Facebook and other Web 2.0 services. Now, it doesn't get boring. It actually gets better. <laughs> Amid the wave of initial coin offerings, or ICOs, outgoing Federal Reserve Jan Ch uh, Janet Yellen, Chairman Janet Yellen, has called Bitcoin a highly speculative asset and not a stable store of value. However, if Bitcoin and other digital currencies started to crash and burn and fade away under regulatory pressures, will it be a black eye for blockchain? No, not according to Ryan. The cat is out of the bag, my exact words, three weeks ago. If Bitcoin gets knocked back, it may create an atmosphere or paranoia, but it will not underlie the value of blockchain. The enterprise itself is the real economy. It is significant. I agree. San Francisco-based Chronicle is taking part in a mini-ledger, a project aimed at getting drug companies to adopt to the blockchain. Despite blockchain's roller coaster ride, many blockchain, par many blockchain projects are in full swing. Another company. One is Hyperledger, an umbrella organization created by the Linux Foundation to incubate many different enterprise blockchain technologies. Hyperledger has already 170 members creating different situations or different businesses that will run block on blockchain. Two financial industry consortiums, R3 and Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, are building private digital ledgers. R3 and 70 or so, excuse me, R3 had 70 or so firms when they contacted them already on board. Bitcoin versus private projects. This just goes on forever. Bitcoin's public ledger is replicated on network computers around the world. It is, it is accessible to miners that use Bitcoin code. For cryptocurrencies, blockchain records records all the changes of ownership of digital tokens. Transactions are confirmed using encrypted code. Each block contains a set of new transactions verified by a network of computers without the need of any central authority, middleman like a bank, a credit card processor, an exchange, or anything. It's getting interesting now. Enterprise blockchain apps retain this public ledger aspect of the cryptocurrency blockchains and they validate transaction using different types of methods. Another difference, with Bitcoin, anyone who buys a digital token is in the ledger loop, but most enterprise blockchains are permission making them accessible only to certain parties. So they're trying different types of blockchain, but blockchain is it. Walmart, Nestle, IBM, you name it, London-based firms, uh, Everledge, everybody is jumping on the blockchain bandwagon. Blockchain supporters say digital ledgers can also be used, among other things, in applications including land titles, real estate deals, healthcare records, the music industry for copyright protection, the list goes on forever. While leery of Bitcoin and in the financial industry, the financial, the financial industry is embracing blockchain. Sebastian says most blockchain-related job openings are companies like Fidelity, Invesco, JP Morgan, 
and Bank of America. This goes on and on and on. The one thing I did notice was this at the end of the article. I won't read it all to you, but it's just to show you that blockchain is really starting to be the thing of the future. I believe in it. So should you. Okay. One of the last things in the article. Very interesting. Amazon Web Services, the cloud computing arm of Amazon.com, has yet to jump on the blockchain wagon. Not on the bandwagon at all. Andy Jazzy, of, uh, a CEO of AWS, said that a customer, uh, at a customer conference in November, distributed ledger technology may not pan out. This is people from, believe it or not, this is people from Amazon speaking. They think blockchain, blockchain technology may not pan out. We're in a hype cycle, they say. There are magical abilities attributed to blockchain that may not materialize at all. So for some reason, Amazon doesn't believe in blockchain, but all the rest of us do, and I don't care what Amazon thinks. The cat is out of the bags, kid, with blockchain. This is the beginning of a really big push. A new society of internet users, a new society, if you ask me, of how we move cash around, a new society of banking, You'll see, it's going to get very interesting. Banks and brokerages, if I were you, I'd be looking for a job with me right now. You're all going to be out of one soon. <laughs> anyway, traders, I'm going to really continue to delve into this. I've been studying Ripple. You'll see, I'm studying everything. One day at a time, I'm getting better and better at this. I told you I was going to go crypto crazy, and you will come with me. All right, traders, that's just about it. Come join me at livewithoscar.com. Meet me in my free live trading room. Join the membership because I give you recommendations, and Omni has been killing these markets with its recommendations. Winner after winner after winner. Ask anyone who joins. Come on down, livewithoscar.com. Grab the platinum membership. I will see you there. Remember, keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best things you can do, in my opinion, to keep those emotions at bay is say this to yourselves every morning, every afternoon, every evening. And you know what that is. Stops are in. Emotions. Sorry if I bored you with that article, but boy, oh boy, you've got to stop paying attention. Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided.